Did you know that George Washington isn't technically the first American president? He was actually the 15th. Peyton Randolph was the first American president, but he governed the United Colonies of America. After the name change, the next president was George Washington. Sadly, Peyton Randolph has been forgotten in history due to a technicality. Washington was born in Westmoreland County, Virginia. His great-grandfather came to America from England in 1657 on a ship called the Seahorse. His mother wouldn't let him join the Royal Navy. Washington was known as the father of his country. Washington was known for his temper. To quote Thomas Jefferson, when Washington's temper broke its bonds, he was most tremendous in his wrath, and he was much inflamed and got into one of those passions when he cannot command himself. That's an old English way of saying he's basically the Hulk. That's not even an exaggeration. The natives nicknamed him the Town Destroyer and the Devourer of Villages. He was the only person to be elected unanimously. In fact, he's the only American president to be elected unanimously twice. By law, no US officer can outrank George Washington. To ensure this, he was posthumously promoted to a six-star general. Washington was so poor when he became president that he had to regularly borrow money. However, during his presidency, he became the richest American president until Donald Trump. In today's money, he would have been worth $500 million. He established the nation's official currency, the Supreme Court, and the State Department. He formed the tradition of having a cabinet of advisors and the inaugural address. His dogs were called Mopsy, Sweet Lips, Scentwell, Dunkard, Taster, Tipler, Tipsy, and Vulcan. He also had two horses called Nelson and Blueskin, and a donkey called Royal Gift. His second inaugural speech is the shortest inaugural speech in American history. It was only 135 words long, and it lasted less than two minutes. Here's the entire speech right now. I am called upon by the voice of my country to execute the functions of its chief magistrate. When the occasion proper for it shall arrive, I shall endeavor to express the high sense I entertain of this distinguished honor, and of the confidence which has been reposed in me by the people of United America. Before the execution of any official act of the President, the Constitution requires an oath of office. This oath I am now about to take, and in your presence, that if it shall be found during my administration of the government I have in any instance violated willingly or knowingly the injunctions thereof, I may, besides incurring constitutional punishment, be subject to the upbraidings of all who are now witness of the present solemn ceremony. Washington was an extraordinary dancer and would dance for hours at balls with female guests. George Washington is the only American president never to set foot in the White House. It wasn't finished until after he died. I'm going to try and do at least one famous quote for each president. One that's often used, and most people don't even realize that George Washington said it, is, It is far better to be alone than to be in bad company. Okay, you knew this was going to happen. Let's talk about Washington's teeth. He suffered dental problems for his entire adult life. Letters and diary entries make many reference to aching pains, lost teeth, ill-fitting dentures, inflamed gums, and so on and so on. In fact, the same year he became president, he only had one tooth left. They were all pulled out by 1796. As the years went by, he spoke less and less as he became too self-conscious of his teeth. Despite what many history books say, Washington did not have wooden teeth. His teeth were made of hippo ivory. Old paintings of Washington show him looking very serious and intense. When he was having his portrait taken, he was trying to keep his jaw straight as his false teeth were very bulky, which led to him suffering daily pain. As the years went by, this actually changed the shape of his jawline. His wife, Martha, also wore dentures. When he wasn't wearing his teeth, he would set them on a silver plate. That's five teeth facts in a row, by the way. Unless you're a history buff, you'd probably assume that Washington became the first president because he won every single battle he was in. It's actually the opposite. He lost nearly every major battle he fought in. His near-perfect record of retreat and defeat stretches back to pre-revolutionary days. He lost the battles of Fort Necessity, Long Island, White Plains, Monongahela, Fort Washington, Brandywine, and Germantown. Despite his defeats, Washington's tactics in warfare are legendary. He was phenomenal at getting his men to charge under fire and for boosting morale in the direst fights. His administrative abilities and his strategic understanding of a battleground were said to be unequaled. In a letter penned to his brother, Washington wrote, I heard the bullets whistle, and believe me, there is something charming to the sound of bullets. Is there any other story to make Washington sound like a superhero? Yes, yes there is. During a battle in the French and Indian War, Washington's horse was shot and he fell to the ground. However, he got up immediately onto another horse and carried on. This horse was also shot dead, and he once again plummeted to the ground. 
In spite of this, he got back on his feet and continued the fight. Afterward, four bullet wounds were found in his coat. This made people believe that Washington was chosen by God to lead his country. If that was in the movie, that would be considered too unrealistic. And that actually happened! Okay, those last few facts were quite long, so let's look at a few quick ones. Here's 10 quick facts. His presidency founded the US Navy. He left school when he was 15. He never had any children. His first job was land surveying. He was very tall for his time, standing six foot two. He only vetoed two bills during his entire eight years as a president. He was the first person to sign the constitution. He read the Bible every day. He described his religion as Episcopalian. And he was a redhead. On November 17th, 1751, he contracted smallpox while he was in Barbados. He survived the disease, rendering him immune to it for the rest of his life. This was incredibly advantageous during the smallpox epidemic during the American Revolution. He signed the first copyright law on May 31st, 1790. It was known as the Copyright Act of 1790. His favorite food was peanut soup, sweet potatoes with coconut, and string beans with mushroom. There's a famous story of Washington cutting down a cherry tree when he was a kid. When his father asked who cut it down, he said, I cannot tell a lie. It was I that cut down the cherry tree. Lovely story. It's not true. Sorry. His vice president, John Adams, became the second president of America. Although many politicians of the time wore wigs, George Washington was one of the very few who never did. He had long, thick hair for his entire adult life. Some sources say George Washington smoked weed. This idea comes from the fact that he wrote about his Indian hemp in a letter. Although this plant can create cannabis, he couldn't have smoked it because the plant only had 0.3% THC, which is a necessary chemical to develop cannabis. Modern weed has at least 5% THC, but it can be as high as 20%. He was growing hemp to help produce clothes. Despite what is said about Thomas Jefferson, George Washington is the only American president that freed all of his slaves upon his death. He had 123 slaves at the time of his death. Washington thought handshaking was undignified, so he bowed instead. He had three doctors with him upon his death, but no one knows for sure what killed him. The most popular theory is that he died from epiglottitis, which is an inflammation near the tongue which affects his windpipe. How do you not know how the first president died, but you know what his favourite food is? His last words were, "'Tis well." When he died on December 14th, 1799, Napoleon ordered ten days of mourning in France. Britain's Royal Navy showed their respect by lowering their flags at half-mast. After his death, his wife burned all but five letters that Washington wrote to her to protect his private life. Personal thank you to Donovan Gherkin. Without him, everything I've written wouldn't be possible. To him, I am eternally thankful. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.